Escape from Pretoria Escape from Pretoria is an Australian prison film based on a true story and released in the year 2020. The plot of the film revolves around two white South Africans, Stephen Lee and Tim Jenkin, who were imprisoned in the infamous Pretoria prison for working on behalf of the African National Congress. After getting imprisoned, they used multiple tactics to break free. The film starts with a prologue explaining that in 1973, when Stephen Lee and Tim Jenkin graduated, half of South Africa was in flames. Black kids were shot like rabbits by the police, whereas the white people enjoyed their lives peacefully. Stephen and Tim grew up under apartheid, which means they had to face the segregation of people based on their skin colors. They were strongly against that idea, so they wanted to join the ongoing struggle for a democratic and free South Africa, where everyone was treated equally with no racial discrimination. So the duo joined the prohibited African National Congress in 1978 and carried out anti-apartheid missions alongside the black and Asian men and women in Cape Town. The two managed to spread the news that freedom and equality for all races should be fought for at all costs by setting leaflet explosives along the streets of South Africa. However, they had to pay a much greater cost than they imagined when the police arrived to catch them. The two are arrested and while they are under interrogation, Tim's girlfriend, Daphne, sneaks in secretly to give Tim some money and request him to not appeal to the police. Tim is boiling rage against the racist police and is determined to stand by his stance. Later, Tim hides the money in his butthole to keep himself from getting caught. In the courthouse, Tim is sentenced to 12 years of imprisonment for being a chief bomb maker, and Stephen is sentenced to 8 years of imprisonment for being the accomplice, all while their loved ones weep at the decision of the judge. Stephen attempts to break through the window and escape from the courthouse, but is immediately caught and brutally beaten. Finally, they're transported to Pretoria Prison and are berated by the chief at their welcome. As they enter the jail, the duo is carefully checked for carrying unauthorized items into the prison. Tim examines everything thoroughly, the gates, the locks, the keys, and the officers. Both the friends are locked in separate adjacent cells. On their first day at the prison, Tim meets Dennis Goldberg, an older political prisoner. Dennis guides Tim to sit with their type of people and not with the murderers who are in blue uniforms. Stephen also joins them and tells Dennis that he and Tim are not planning to complete their sentence. Later, while jogging in the prison ground, Dennis shows Tim and Stephen the 20-foot high walls with barbed wire that are all flailed so that if someone tries to cross through, they will be trapped. He also shows them the giant searchlights, bowers with guns, and tunnels that lead back onto prison property. According to Dennis, prisoners who enter the prison always get caught, so he discourages Tim and Stephen from trying to escape. After Dennis leaves, another prisoner named Leonardo Fontaine meets Tim and Stephen, who berates Dennis for always discouraging the prisoners from trying to escape. Leonard tells Tim and Stephen that he will join them if they have a plan of escape. He informs them that there is no hope in trying to escape through the cell, as it is a concrete tomb and makes it clear that their only way out is through the grill. Dennis is the doyen of the prison, who has been given four life sentences for his involvement against the apartheid government by violent revolution. Days keep passing by, and on day 23, Tim is seen staring at the grill lock. He spends days and nights thinking of a hundred ways to break through the lock, and finally comes up with the idea of replicating the grill key with wood. One day, he traces the shape of the grill lock on a piece of drawing paper with a pencil and takes the measurement of it. He then uses wood and cuts it to the same length to see if his plan could work. Later, while taking a shower, Tim and Stephen inform Leonard about their idea, who at first thinks this is a flop but quickly decides to be a part of it as he's desperate to live his life with his son. At breakfast, Leonard deliberately makes a scene by throwing the breakfast tray on the floor to lure in the officer, allowing Tim to carefully analyze the keys hanging on the officer's pant loop. Tim goes on with his daily routine but keeps looking at the officer's keys to perfect his idea of drawing it. Finally, the sketch of the key is made and Tim's plan is ready to be executed. So on day 74, while working in the wood shop, Tim steals pieces of wood and hides them in his bottle. Stephen stalls the officer while Tim is hiding the pieces in his bottle. As the prisoners leave the shop, their bottles are emptied by the officer and fortunately, Tim is not caught. Later in his cell, Tim cuts the wood into the shape of the key and perfects its edges so that it fits the lock to his cell seamlessly. After much effort, he manages to make an exact copy of the officer's key. Finally, the moment of truth comes and Tim is able to unlock his cell's grill with the wooden key, only to find another metal door on the other side. 
So he shares his success with Leonard and asks them to make a complex key that can unlock the metal door lock. Tim then analyzes the keys of the metal door to make the new keys. Later on day 100, while mopping the floor of the corridor, he tries to unlock the metal door to see if his key is working or not. Leonard keeps a check on the door to alert Tim about the officer's arrival. Tim inserts the key into the keyhole and is happy to see that the key is functional. However, when he tries to take the key out, it gets stuck and breaks inside. Tim manages to take out the broken pieces of wood from the keyhole but is unable to push the lock back inside. Later, the prison officer arrives to lock the metal doors and is puzzled to see the lock of the metal door out. However, he doesn't pay much attention to it and locks the door before leaving. On visitor's day, Tim waits for his father who does not arrive to meet him. On the other hand, Leonard is in tears meeting his young boy, Antony, who gives him a kite he made. He promises his son that he'll be out before the officer terminates his meeting session before time. Leonard begs the officer to let him talk to his son a little bit longer, but the officer doesn't allow it, which makes Leonard more determined to escape out of the prison. On day 142, Leonard comes up with an idea and proposes it to Tim and Stephen. He shows them the kite that his son made, which has a small spindle of fine black thread that he can use to get to the metal door. However, according to Tim, the idea is pointless and they can't turn the key without this method. Just then, when the trio is discussing their plan, an officer arrives suspecting something fishy. But Leonard plays it cool and keeps sweeping the floor. After the officer leaves, Stephen gets an idea when he sees the broom and they try to see if it could work. They take the broom through the cell window to see if it would reach the keyhole of the outer metal door. In the wood shop, Tim then makes a long wooden stick with a pulley to easily turn the key and is finally successful in making it. One night he tries to experiment if this could work or not. He sneaks the wooden stick from his cell window to his cell's metal door and manages to unlock it easily. However, while taking the key out of the keyhole, it falls to the ground. Tim quickly chews a piece of gum and then sticks it on the wooden stick so that it acts like glue. Finally, with great difficulty and a nerve-wracking ordeal, he manages to bring the key back to his cell. The next day, he informs Stephen and Leonard about the success of his plan, and the trio is elated about it. Later, Tim and Stephen decide to bury the keys in the prison garden and are nearly safe from being caught. Dennis once again takes the opportunity to warn Tim that he'll be sentenced to 25 years of imprisonment if he gets caught escaping and discourages him by saying that this plan is doomed. Later, Tim and Stephen inform the other prisoners about their escape plan and ask them to join hands, but everyone refuses, thinking that escaping is impossible. From day 206 onward, Tim and Stephen go around making other preparations for their escape. They try to retrieve civilian clothes that they could wear before escaping and a newspaper to get a map of the place. On day 296, when Tim receives the order for his new glasses, the officer informs him about his black friend who got arrested for committing an armed robbery, making Tim heartbroken but even more determined not to give up. At night, Tim and Leonard sneak around the prison to do a test run by using keys. Although their test run is successful, they gain the attention of the night guard, so both of them hide in a closet as the night guard walks by and are nearly saved from being caught. While the guard goes to check up on the cells, Tim and Leonard check other doors as well, and Leonard unintentionally drops his sweat on the floor. While checking the last door, they hear the guard coming back and are forced to run back to the closet to hide. When the night guard comes back, he's confused to see droplets of sweat on the floor. However, without taking action, he returns back to his office, after which Tim and Leonard run back to their cells. The next morning, Tim misses the morning bell as he's busy sleeping after being awake all night. The officers arrive in his cell for a crackdown and berate him badly for missing the morning bell. Tim is asked to stand outside his cell while it's being inspected. It turns out that everyone's cell is being searched and severe measures are taken to restrict the illegal activity of the prisoners. Tim and Stephen are heartbroken to see Leonard being brutally beaten for keeping his son's photographs in his cell. Just then, the officer throws Tim's book related to black people from his cell and orders him not to keep it in there. When he throws Tim's pen holder on the floor, pieces of the wooden key scatter all over the floor. The guard's unable to figure out what they are, so Tim fools him by saying that they use them as a photo stand. The guard then leaves the cell after he fails to find anything suspicious and Tim takes a deep sigh of relief. Tim then starts hiding the keys all around the prison, in bookcases, cracks in the wall, and laundry buckets filled with soap powder. Meanwhile at night, Stephen and Leonard make the necessary arrangements for the escape. 
On day 404, after his dentist appointment, Tim discovers that a new gun tower is being constructed outside the prison. Later, he and Stephen and Leonard once again ask other prisoners to join them in escaping and share his success story of making 39 keys for 15 separate doors without getting detected. However, Dennis and the other prisoners are sure that they'll be caught escaping and refuse to be part of the escape plan. Leonard pities them and warns them that if they don't escape, they'll regret their decision for their entire lives. Unbeknownst to Tim, the guards decide to inspect his cell again and turn it upside down, but find nothing suspicious. After the inspection, Tim sends the prison map that he managed to retrieve earlier to Stephen in his cell through the bottom of his cell's door. Soon, Tim starts executing the escape plan and leaves his cell by unlocking his cell's grill and metal door. He then unlocks Stephen and Leonard's metal door and also asks Dennis one last time to come, but Dennis only wishes him good luck. The trio quickly changes into the civilian clothes that they smuggled earlier. Meanwhile, the night guard decides to look for a flush pump in the closet. After he finds the flush pump, he leaves for the toilet. Unbeknownst to the trio, they quickly hide in the closet to evade the guard. After the guard is done cleaning the toilet, he returns to keep the flush pump back. It seems that they will be caught. However, Dennis decides to help them. In an attempt to distract the guard, Dennis short circuits the light in his cell, which causes power failure of all the cells. He then starts calling the guard to lure them away. This gives Tim, Stephen, and Leonard enough time to reach the last door. They successfully cross almost all the doors. As they reach the last one, the trio is ecstatic to see the outside world through the keyhole, but unfortunately, Tim is unable to unlock it. He tries all the keys, but nothing works. Leonard gets extremely frustrated, and in his rage, he starts thrashing the door with the help of a chisel and screwdriver until finally breaking it open. The trio then leave the prison, evading the guard who has a sniper and merging with the commoners on the street. They take a taxi driven by a black driver and leave the premises successfully. In the prison, the guard arrives to awaken the prisoners and is petrified to see the three prisoners missing. Dennis and the other prisoners laugh sarcastically at the officer for getting fooled. The film ends with an epilogue stating that after the escape, the biggest manhunt in the history of South Africa ensued. The trio crossed the border to Mozambique, Tanzania, and then London, where they continued the struggle against apartheid. They remained fugitives and were finally pardoned in 1991. Dennis, on the other hand, served 22 years in prison and was released in 1985. Following their escape, Tim's girlfriend was held in prison for nine days. They never met each other since Tim's escape. The apartheid finally ended in 1992 after a great global struggle. The movie has a rating of 6.8 on IMDb. I hope you all liked the video. If yes, then make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.